video. Today I'm going to be talking about the perp why to have a rooster on in your flock. A lot of people they don't like to have a rooster because they're mean, they're aggressive, they're they're just not nice to have. They crow, they're noisy, they pick on hens. Well, the reason why you want a rooster on your flock is because he is a protector of your girls. He will usually throw himself in the line of fire from your girls. He'll protect them, make sure that they're Make sure just everything's okay. He's the leader. He is the in charge of the entire thing. So he's that's Junior. We call him Jr. for Jr. Chicken. Uh, he is a Buttercup Buff Brahma mix. The reason why we have him is because he is a gamey bird. He's because he's got that half phantom in him, but he's also part Buff Brahma. So that means his daughters, which most of these hens are his daughters. Uh, so they're all in there. I like girls. Most of these hens are his daughters. So they brood their own chicks, they have their own chicks, they hatch their own chicks. So they're very, very reliable. I don't have to keep buying hens every year because I have chicks born. They hatch their own chicks naturally out of my genetics and out of the best layers I have. They lay really good eggs, but roosters are very, very important to have. They, they're kind of just the leader of everything. They control the hens, they keep them in line, they assert the pecking order, they tell them when, they, all the hens, my hens always follow the rooster, he's kind of going off doing his own thing right now, but usually these girls are usually right on him, you yeah, see, you know, he's up, now he's going in the barn, he's going to get some feed, this, which are free range, all free range birds, so they are here, he lets everybody know if there's a hawk in the area, there'll be a hawk and he'll do that loud, like, like that kind of sound. I try to imitate it the best I can, but they'll make that kind of sound. As you can see, the hens are like, what? They're kind of all frozen because they're like, oh. So they'll do like a warning call, and that helps protect your hens too. They'll do a loud screech, and that usually tells the hens that there's danger, there's something in the area, uh, get under a tree, get in shelter, or whatnot. So that's why I have a rooster, and because it's nice to have a rooster, because you don't want too many roosters. Too many roosters will make your hens have bald spots or breeding spots. Their backs will be raw. You can see my hens are all, uh, you can see my goat in the way, but you can see that they don't have any bald spots or any broody spots or anything like that. But that's just because I have 10 hens and one rooster. I only have one rooster. Usually about 10 hens per rooster. That works out really well, but roosters will have their favorite hens. So one, if, even if you have 10 hens and there's still one with a bald spot, that's probably the rooster's favorite hen. So just keep that in mind is it's not always because there's too, not enough hens. It's also because it depends on your rooster a lot. Um, don't usually get like a game bird rooster. Like, well, mine's a half bantam, so he's kind of gamey and he's very flighty. But that's because he's half buttercup. And buttercups are usually a smaller, faster, more wild breed than a, say, like a buff brahm or something. But you want a nice rooster who doesn't terrorize you and doesn't just take... Like, if you come in to feed or collect eggs, he doesn't come off after you. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, that's terrible. I don't want that. You kind of do want that. You want him to be aggressive because if something, say, a possum or a fox or something were to get in there, that rooster would go after him. That rooster would protect your hens, and it wouldn't it wouldn't chase the fox off. It wouldn't definitely kill the fox, but uh, would you rather have your rooster die, or would you rather have your hens that lay eggs and can actually provide for you die? Hens are a lot harder to find than roosters. There's a million roosters in the world, but you always want a rooster to protect your flock and to just make sure that your hens are safe and sound. As you can see, I have some, uh, uh, that's one of my red stars, and then behind her is uh, one of my Easter eggers right there. That's Easter egger. Um, and then underneath her is uh, uh, Cinnamon Queen. And then I have a couple other, I have another Easter egger over here, and. I have a couple buff Brahma, or light Brahmas, my bad, light Brahmas, I used, they're inside right now. The reason why I have light Brahmas is because they are very, very sustainable breed. They um, they hatch their own chicks, they're very, they're known to be very broody and they're also known to be like a meat breed, a meat and broody breed. The only problem with light Brahmas is they are not fast. They are not, um, they can't get away from predators as my Easter eggers. Easter eggers are good layers, they hatch their own chicks, they forage, they're really good foragers. My chickens usually live off the cows or the goats. I also give them uh, slop feed. It's a mixture of grain. It's organic feed. So they only get that, which is that stuff. I have some whole corn in there right now, but <coughs> that's what I feed them. But most of the time, they usually follow the goats or the 
the cows around and eat the flies off them, horse flies and all kinds of grain that the cows and goats get fed. So that kind of keeps them alive and it makes them go out and forage. And I got my chicken tractor out there that has my meat birds in it. But the importance for a rooster is just to really protect your flock and you'd much rather have your rooster die than your hens. So there's my light brahmas all coming out to say hi. These guys are sweet. But as you can see, they're fluorescent white which is a terrible uh, trait to have for free-ranging birds because they are like a target. As in these guys, these guys kind of blend in more. They're a little more uh, wild color to them. And there's another one of my red stars. Red stars are really good layers. Uh, same thing with Easter eggers, but red stars, I'll see if I can get to an egg. I'm on crutches. Um, I dislocated my kneecap. I'm trying to get a... But see, this is... They're a little dirty, but... Uh, this one is a red star egg, and this one is my Easter egg, is one of the Easter egg eggs. She's not um, a full Easter egg, as like I said, is she is the daughter of JR, so she lays like a light brown egg. And then um, her mom, which is, I don't, that, uh, I believe that one's her mom, right there. And then those are, my cinnamon queen, as you can see, is a little bit lighter than my red stars. I only have two red stars and that was because they came from a big factory farm and the guy didn't want them anymore so we took a couple of them. And red stars are, they don't hatch their own chicks. They're good layers but they're not really a, um, a foraging breed. They're, they're nice to have for egg production but they're just, um, they're not, they're not self-reliant. They can't live off the, live as well as uh, Easter egg or a gamey breed you want. A breed that will be able to go out and forage. Uh, I've noticed that we used to have Polish too. Polish are really good foragers as well. Um, our Polish were always outside. Right now they're kind of taking a break. They were out um, following the goats around. The goats went out to the back pasture. Now they're all going into the barn. Run! <laughs> they all go into the barn because I have rabbits in the barn and they go underneath the rabbit cages and eat all the spilled rabbit feed. So that, that kind of cuts into their feed too. So my chickens very rarely actually get fed. They get their own grain um, here, but they also, most of their grain comes from the other livestock. So it, that's, it's very um, crucial because they eat it. So that way that grain doesn't go to waste. But roosters are just, they just kind of help everything. You just, you have a protector of your flock. You have a, a sound alarm and then um, crowing. It's, it's nice to have, it's, I think, I like crowing. A lot of people don't like crowing. If you lived in a subdivision, um, if you lived in a subdivision, they also sell crow collars. Uh, I used to have a couple of chickens in a subdivision. Uh, I lived in a subdivision with my mom for a little bit, but we still had this farm. But I had a couple of chickens there, and I had a rooster, and I, he had a crow collar. It was a Velcro. It goes around their neck, but it's not like to choke them or anything. It's just um, when they crow, their neck their neck expands, and it's a big air pocket like right here. And it expands so you put that there so when they crow it doesn't expand it doesn't choke them it doesn't they don't go like that, like that when they crow it just when they crow it's muffled it sounds it's a lot of people say it's inhumane um in my opinion it's really not but i mean i don't put it on my roosters out here because they're they're free range i don't care if they crow they're on a farm they have the right to crow but in neighborhoods it's a lot harder to have roosters that crow because people complain about it but Roosters are very, very self-sufficient. They, um, they'll have chicks for you. If you get broody breeds or uh, hens that do have their own eggs, it's nice to have a rooster to breed your hens. Or if you want to sell fertile eggs, that also helps too. Um, fertile eggs usually go for a little bit more than just regular eggs. I sell my uh, farm eggs for, well, all my eggs are probably fertilized, but um, they usually don't have an embryo or a start of an embryo until they're about a week old when they when the hens are constantly sitting on them. If they're just sitting outside, they won't start to hatch. They have to be um, about 99.5 degrees. I think it's 95, it's 99, I think it's 99.5. I believe it's 99.5 is what the temperature for hatching chicks is. Um, it has to be on that for about three to four days and then the embryo will start. But my hens, I collect every day unless I have a hen that is starting to go broody, then I leave them in with her. But they start, um, blah, what was I going to say? Okay, my farm eggs, for eating eggs, my eggs go for $3 a dozen. Now, if I were to sell hatching eggs, I sell them as a barnyard mix because they are, I have all kinds of different breeds, cinnamon queens, red stars, light brahmas, uh, buttercups, Easter eggers. So they sell as a barnyard mix. So they're a combination between layer meat, game cross, which is, which my birds actually work really well for me. Uh, they just, 
they're really self-sufficient. They all, I have a little bit of every breed. That's one of my Easter eggers. Right, yeah. Uh, but they all work for me. Uh, the only ones that I don't like really are the Red Stars. They have good eggs, but they don't hatch their own chicks, so I can't keep their genetics. But my Easter eggers all have hatched their own chicks. I probably have six or seven generations of these Easter eggers just because they keep hatching their own chick chicks. And I, I used to have more hens. We used to have probably about uh, 20 hens, 20 laying hens. But we got a new dog, and he killed almost all of our flock, which we corrected, and now he does not kill our flock. But we used to have a rooster a uh, long, long time ago. He was a Rhode Island Red. He was a mean little dude. He was, ugh, he would chase you across the yard. But we had a feral cat get in here, and it took him, and then there was uh, orange fur everywhere, which was cat fur, not fox fur. Everybody was like, orange fur, it's cat. Well, no, it was an orange cat. It was like a tabby kind of color. But there was orange fur, blood everywhere, and it only took the rooster. It didn't take any other hens, just that rooster, because that rooster put up a fight. So, but that's why I think you guys should have a rooster. Roosters really just help everything out. A lot of people complain about them. Uh, just do what works for you. Find something that uh, you want in your genetics. So, like if you want an Easter egg or olive egg, or just don't get too big of a breed, because if you do get, if you say you have Easter eggers like I do, and you get a buff brahma rooster. Those roosters are huge. They get really big. Uh, we used to have a buff brahma rooster. The only problem with that is uh, when you breed them, the chicks might get too big for the egg if you were to try to hatch it yourself. So that's the only problem that I see. But most of the time, it's usually okay. But I would just be careful of that. It's very rarely that it happens, but it can happen, is what I'm saying. But just find what works for you. Find what breed you want in your flock. Uh, Easter eggers work really well. Or if you want to do a red star rooster or... Uh, Leghorns, I don't like Leghorns. They are terrific players, terrific foragers, terrific birds over in general, overall, I should say. But the only problem with Easter, or Leghorns, I'm sorry, I'm still on Easter eggers, is Leghorns is they have a big waddle and a big comb. I live in North Illinois, so we get winters, uh, decent winters where it does get below zero sometimes. Uh, most of the time it's usually around like 10 to 15 degrees in the winter, but their combs and waddles will freeze and they'll turn black and they'll fall off. And Easter eggers do really, really, or not Easter eggers, I keep saying Easter eggers because I keep stuck on these guys. I'm looking at them. And leghorns do terrible in winter weather because they are a Mediterranean breed. They did not come from uh, winter areas. Neither did uh, Easter eggers. I'm not really sure where Easter eggers originated from. I believe, I, I can't think of where they came from, but Easter eggers do really well in the winter because they have a pea comb and they don't have a waddle. They have a beard. Uh, Feather-footed breeds also do well in the winter because they have feathers on their feet. But none of my Easter eggers have gotten frostbite on their toes. Uh, their combs are pea combs, so they're really small over everybody's coming in. But Easter eggers do really well. These guys are all sandbathing over here. Hold on. My crutch over there. Hi, girlies. Yeah, they're all sandbathing, soaking up the sunlight. But... Uh, just find what works best for you. Uh, I very recommend having rooster on your homestead or if you just have free range birds. Uh, neighborhoods are tricky, so just be careful of that. Find what your um, township will allow if you live in town, but I live on a farm, so we have rooster. We always have had a rooster. We, we've never gone without a rooster because roosters are just great to have. They're protectors of your flock. They keep everybody in line. They tell the hens who's boss. They actually even, um, they'll fatten your hens up too because roosters um if you guys have had roosters in the past you'll see them scratching around and then you'll hear them go like a you can kind of see everybody's like what Ooh. they'll kind of make like a weird sound like that and that encourages the hen saying hey i have food for you and they'll they'll hold it in their mouth it'll be like a worm or a grub or a piece of corn or something like that and um that's, that's them trying to feed the hens. They're giving it to the hens because they always watch over, over their hens before they do themselves. Let's see if I can like get these guy, girls attention. When? Now they're like, nah, fuck, you're not, you're not a rooster. <laughs> but I tried, so <laughs> I'm just kind of experimenting with it. I was like, but you'll hear them, they'll make that noise a lot. So that, that means they're just trying to feed the hens. They're giving them, they, they do a really good job with hens. It just depends on your rooster. If you get a rooster that um, is raised with roosters, they will be very, very aggressive towards hens because they've never been with a hen. So 
they usually get them as a chick or if you if you do buy a full-grown one um, that's fine too but get them as a chick raise them up with all hens so that way they kind of learn to respect the hens but I mean as they come to age around five to six months they will be like trying to rape your hens uh, it's kind of a harsh word but that's kind of what it is they'll be more aggressive towards your hens <coughs> And they'll be because they're learning they don't really know what they're doing they just have that urge but they'll get better over time don't just as soon as they're like six months you're like oh my god he's tearing apart my hens they will do that their first couple months until they actually learn how to breed successfully and how to actually do it correctly so but don't don't get discouraged if your rooster's ripping up your hens at six months they'll learn they'll figure it out but if it continues uh then consider on getting another rooster or just you know keep them away from your hens or something like that um but that's all for today's video my rooster kind of dipped out on me he went inside but he he's teaching the hens all these bad habits <laughs> that's the only thing is this rooster's been here longer than most of these hens so he kind of he trained everybody to go in the barn where to find the food and everything else and they go and eat cat food chickens love cat food so if you have chickens hide the cat food never let them find cat food because they will not stay out of it it is like crack to them they will just devour cat food so that's it for today's video is just kind of a quick video on uh, why I have a rooster and why you should have a rooster and the purposes of a rooster and just going over different breeds and what what I have and what works for me on this little tiny homestead so all right that's it thank you for watching don't forget that don't forget to hit that subscribe button have a beautiful day